Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to calculate the electric field due to a dipole which has a point charge perpendicular to that dipole. So we're going to have uh, this charge here, which is the distance of y away from the dipole, and the dipole is separated by a distance of s here. Now you see that makes a nice little right triangle here, so we can do some calculations with that. So here we go, with our triangle, we have the distance uh, y, we have s over 2 because it's half that distance, and we have r here as the hypotenuse. So we can solve for r using the Pythagorean theorem, and we get the square root of y squared plus s squared over 4. Now we're going to want to solve that, uh, we're going to want to find r cubed, and we're going to see in a, in a minute why. Uh, so if we solve it for r cubed, we get uh, y squared plus s squared over 4 to the 3 halves. Now, we're going to have to remember that. I mean, we can just slide over, but, you know. Anyway, this is the, uh, the standard equation for a point charge. Now, um, this is the constant, uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Uh, this q is the charge and you have 1 over r squared, the r is the distance, um, and then times r hat. Well, I decided to write r hat as r vector over r magnitude uh, because it just makes this uh, easier to solve because down here we can see that we can make that 1 over r magnitude cubed by multiplying, then we just bring this down. And here's our vector here, we have it s over 2, in the x direction, y in the y direction, and zero in the z direction, because there is nothing in the z direction in this this uh, derivation. So we need that r cubed here. See, it comes in handy to scroll over. Look at your r cubed. Uh, we plug in that r cubed, and we see that we get the electric field for the positive part of the dipole to be. Uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q times 1 over y squared plus s squared over 4 to the 3 halves and we have our vector there. Now for the other part, the negative part, uh, we can see we have that same triangle so really nothing's going to change except for a few signs uh, because the, the charge of course, the q is going to be negative um, and that s over 2 is also negative so we just get the constant times the q uh, times the 1 over y squared plus s squared over 4 to 3 halves and our vector. Now we're going to want to add this e minus and this e plus here. So first off we're going to want to factor out a uh, negative 1 out of this, uh, this vector on the e1. So that's going to be positive, that's going to be negative, and we factor it out, that'll be positive. So we'll notice here that when we're adding that the two y's, because you've got a plus y and a minus y, those will cancel. And we have an s2 plus an s2, so we'll get an s. And we can factor out that s from there. And you see here we got our two s over two, so we get that s over that, and we get that that one there, which is good um, in our vector. Uh, so this is it. But if this is essentially this, the electric field. But if the y is much greater than s, if the distance between this point charge and the dipole is more than the distance between the uh, two points on the dipole, uh, then we can make the approximation uh, that that s is going to be so small, it's not going to affect this y squared. So you just get a y squared to the three halves, which uh, will just give you y cubed. And so your final result is that 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times your, your q, your charge. Uh, times uh, the s over y cubed, uh, and that is uh, that is the final answer there. Now, if we want, we can check the units, make sure they match. Up here, 
because they should match the same uh, for the point charge up here. So we get meters squared, we get columns, we have our constant. Uh, down here we have our columns, our constant, we have meters, we have meters cubed, so that is meters squared, one, and they match, and that's it.